welcome back to my channel happy 2019 i'm not going to even go on a rant about how i can't believe it's 2019 but i'm super excited for this year every start of the official new year i tend to start my birthdays as being a new year but this is the official start of the new year and every new year i like to think of goals for myself i'm very goal oriented short-term goals long-term goals and i think that the single most change that can impact your life is setting goals for yourself and i don't know i just love setting goals so this year instead of bringing to you guys my 2019 goals which were rather personal this year i just decided to do a financial segment on my channel i'm not quite sure what i'm going to call this segment yet but it'll be at the top by the time this is live for you guys but i wanted to do this because lots of you guys asked me for financial tips and advice and I just want to preface this entire series by saying I am in no way a financial advisor, a financial guru. Uh, I don't have all the answers and I'm still learning and growing through this journey with a lot of you guys as well. But I think for my age, I have done a good job at trying to get the most knowledge that I can. Uh, I don't always do the right things. Sometimes I do things that are against even my better judgment. But overall, I think it's great for someone, especially in my age range, or even younger people in their like late teens early 20s to get a good financial foundation I think that is the single most thing that can set you up for financial success later on is definitely starting early so I wanted to make this series geared toward anyone who wants to learn more about finances people who want to just be more financially savvy uh, and especially my younger viewers because while I learned a lot about finances from my parents I didn't get to where I am now as far as how I think about finances and my long-term goals until like last year and the year before and I'm still growing and evolving and that's the wonderful thing I think as long as you are constantly learning that's how you're going to be your best self so today I want to talk all about how to limit yourself how to scale back a little bit um, and how to make sacrifices and the art of saying no because one of my biggest goals for this year is learning how to say no to things that do not help me progress or level up in my life and that can be hard a lot of times especially for people my age um when you get your first grown-up job you automatically feel like yes i've worked so hard for this especially if you've gone through college or what have you or trade school and you're finally at a place where you feel like you should be able to do whatever you want with your money um i think one of the biggest things to get a grasp on as far as your finances is learning to scale back and to live within your means now i'm going to do a video every month so every month you will see a video on another topic we're going to go through budgeting saving how you should save how much to save um how to enjoy life and still save towards your goals and still have your financial goals at the forefront um, of your mind things like that but this month like I said we're talking about scaling back and I want to bring you guys some personal experience so one thing my parents always taught me when I was younger my parents my aunts and uncles is to live below your means and so for me and my family that meant just because you can't afford this much house or this much car or you know this amount of Christmas gifts or this much vacation doesn't mean you necessarily have to have that and that is something that it took me so long to really grasp because I'm not gonna lie to you guys I love shopping I love acquiring new things I love to get stuff and my dad always told me less is more live beneath your means and it wasn't until about last year where I truly understood the beauty of that so if you guys don't know a little bit of my story um, last year I got laid off from my job and if it wasn't for me living below my means and learn to say no and pick and choose certain things I would have been in much more of a financial tizzy than I was so when I say that I mean things like when I first got that job I wasn't making the amount I was making when I ended and I was still making a decent amount of money but in my mind until I make a certain amount of money a year no hair no nails every two weeks no eating out things that most people my age range or even people who were in the same tax bracket as me who made the same amount of money a lot of things a lot of times these are things that people do um it's also good to prioritize your spending according to where you are in your finances or in your financial journey so the biggest thing to me was learning to say no no to going out all the time and even when i was laid off 
I had to kind of balance between wanting to save and wanting to still enjoy myself but saying no you know maybe you're not at a point right now where you need to have a $200 cable bill and a $150 phone bill wherever you are in your financial journey you should be making changes that are the smaller stepping stones to get towards your larger goals so for me that means when I first had a job I didn't go move out from my parents home and we're gonna talk about taking steps as a younger adult maybe after college like what next i think it's important to make sound financial decisions that are going to set you up for success in the long run if i had moved out nine months ago where would i be now probably living on the side of the road so it's just important to learn how to say no to draw back on certain things maybe you could learn to do your own hair at home you know that's something that i do i go and get my hair done probably three to four times a year sometimes i do go get a trim but as far as regular maintenance like straightening and curling my hair i learned to do that on my own because the way i look at it is that's a bill that i don't have to have you know i think of expenses as bills and in my mind i don't want to have bills i don't want a car note I don't want to pay rent or mortgage but those are things that a lot of us do have to pay I don't want to have extra bills if they're not necessary so scaling back do you really need to pay for that Netflix membership or whatever you call it every month do you really need to go get your nails done that often maybe you could get a manicure and not a pedicure maybe you can try to space them out uh, maybe one week longer that can save you some money in the long run as well do you really need to go to Starbucks five times a week <laughs> and these are all all things that of course we want to do but these all come with societal pressures as well I used to always go get my nails done with my friend that's something that I enjoyed doing with my friend but I was spending a lot of money but I also didn't get to going to the nail salon every two weeks until I made a certain amount of money and in my mind when I'm looking at my priorities and what I should be eliminating out of my monthly budget or my bills as I call them I look at things that if I had that little bit of extra money could that make a big difference so in my budget it's let's say when i go get a gel manicure it's 36 dollars, including this hip i would think to myself that's around 80 dollars a month if i had an extra 80 dollars a month would that put me in a better financial situation and if the answer is yes then that might be something you need to draw back on and we're going to talk about ways you can work these things into your budget but I don't know I want people especially my age to start thinking about what could you do with that extra money every month um, in my previous job I put on a lot of trainings as part of my job and a lot of the people I work with weren't necessarily the best at saving and even after I did my training all about saving and being financially responsible I don't think it necessarily made them want to do it but in my mind I think do you really need to have that car payment if you could have think about it guys if you had an extra 400 or 500 dollars a month due to not paying your car notes would that put you in a better financial situation and most often than not the answer is yes would that allow you to contribute more to your 401k if you had one would that allow you to open up different other types of retirement investment accounts would it allow you to save more towards purchasing a home um, these are just things I think you should think of especially when you are in my age range when you're in your late 20s to early 30s I know a lot of us want to rush to do things you know I'm guilty of it as well but I just want to get through to you guys especially my younger viewers that it's okay to delay gratification and that's something that I think um, us Millennials because I guess I'm a millennial that's something that I don't think Millennials all the way understand is that it's okay for me to not be able to do this this at this point in my life but if I really stick tight to my budget and have my financial goals in the back of my mind and have them written written out um, on a vision board or have them in my phone one day I'm gonna get to a point where I can go on those vacations where I can get my nails done weekly get my hair done weekly um, and that's what I tell you guys a lot of times when you guys see me making luxury purchases you guys are like how are you able to do this and we're gonna talk all about how to get the most out of your money how to make the most money money how to spend money wisely
wisely but one of the biggest things I just wish that I learned even when I was younger even when I had my smaller retail jobs is just the art of saying no and scaling back delaying gratification it's okay to not have what you really want right now if you're thinking of long-term goals even right now for myself could I afford a car payment probably but that extra $400 a month or whatever a car payment would be would allow me to do so many other things and that's what I think of so I don't want to talk too much and I want to make this video too too long but I just really wanted to talk to you guys about that because for me this is the year of saying no to things that do not help to get me to the next step and I'm really comfortable and at a place where I can say you know what I'm gonna take one big trip a year people may try to pressure me to do more but it's more about what is financially okay for me and I know what my numbers look like and I know where I want to be and what I have to do to get there is live below my means and save 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 and we're going to talk all about why saving is so important but I know I was talking to one of my friends the other day or the other week and she was saying how her mom said that you know you can't take your money with you and that's very true but I don't think people my age think of how long we're living and I don't know about you guys but I don't want to be 70 years old and still going to work every Day. I want to be able to be comfortable and travel if I want to or just sit at home and relax and not have to have the stress of working so these are why it's so important to start these foundations now and get these goals like in stone now because the older you get and the more responsibility you have and the more life happens in my mind it's gonna get harder so that's just something I want you guys to think of uh, and next month we will talk all about the budget and the importance of a budget but I think right now as the year starts out it's important for us to think about how we can scale back and live below our means if we're not doing so and how that can contribute to meeting our longer term goals now Everyone is not going to want to do this. Some people like living at their means, living above their means. Some people don't want to save. Some people's goals are just to have a certain car and that's fine. But <laughs> with respect to my goals and what I want out of life, it's important for me to be able to scale back now so that later on I can reap the benefits of all the cost saving I was doing in my youth. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it just kind of gave you something to think about, uh, ways we can cut back on things to help, you know, work towards our larger goals. So if you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will see you in the next video and I will see you next month for a budgeting video. Bye.